Hey folks, welcome back to The Portable Gamer. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator and welcome to Oakland. So we are down at the port. This is exactly where we dropped off last episode. There was a place to sleep at the port, so I pulled in here. Uh, not exactly even, but I mean, I'm inside the yellow lines. I'm really liking this render. Looks great. The game has patched up to 1.32.3.44 Sierra. And I think this is the, the public retail version now. We're out of beta. I think we are. And the reason I think that is I just saw a note that Oregon DLC will be released on October 4th, which I believe is a Thursday. Today is September 29th, so less than a week. And because it's less than a week, that means this will be the last episode we do without the Oregon DLC. So let's try to find a job headed up that way, right? You see what I'm saying? Because the reason is next time we're going to head into Oregon. So let's see how close we can get to somewhere up here. And of course, neither. Nothing. All right. So what about San Francisco? Well, that's a little better. Uh, Elko. Nope. Wrong direction. Truckee. Eh, not really. So Stockton. Anything going north? To Redding. Aha. We got three hours to get there. Can we get from Oakland to Stockton in three hours? Well, only one way to find out. And just as a fallback plan, let's see if there's anything going up that way from SAC. Sierra Vista, no. Nope, not really. Okay, it's going to be Stockton. Let's get there as quick as we can and just hope for the best. Stockton to Reading. Okay. All right. Now, turn that down there. I said turn that down there. There we go. Let's hop in cab. Lights on. Brakes off. Here we go. So yeah, super excited about Oregon. It's, it's weird being American and knowing like how I feel when I see a DLC coming out on the ETS side. Right? And I have, I mean, I've spent, I guess, a lot of time, relatively, in Europe, but not as much, obviously, as a European. And those aren't my home countries, you know what I mean? So when I hear that there's a new DLC coming out for ETS, I don't really have a basis of comparison, like how accurate is this or how, you know what I mean, how awesome is this? And I think the last one, what was the last one that came out? Italia. I think was the last ETS DLC. But even though I live in California, I've spent plenty of time in Oregon and I'm really curious like how they kind of execute it, like how it looks and how it all works out. And also we're going 64 miles and I see that we've got an hour and a half to get there and the job is gonna hold for three hours. So we do have time to get fuel and we do need fuel. So let's go ahead and do that now before we have a trailer on just because it's always easier when you're not trying to get a trailer through, particularly doubles, which is what we're picking up. So, get that right in there. So yeah, I'm curious to see what Oregon looks like, and I don't have any kind of a personal stake in it, like how did they, you know, what kind of a job did they do with my home state? I don't feel that personally about it, but I am really curious, like, what it's going to look like, because SCS is so good, I think, at capturing the way a place looks. For real, it's like, I'm not being silly when I say that. I think they really do, they nail it, and I'm, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that DLC. There's no date yet. There's no date yet for Beyond the Baltic Sea. We'll have to see when that comes out. Uh, I'm guessing it'll probably be another month or so, but there's not even a date on it yet. And what was the other thing? There was one more thing. Hmm, can't remember, can't remember. So we'll just drive and figure it out. But yeah, man, it's been a super cool week for me and a little bit hectic. 
but it's Saturday. I'm going to get these recorded. It's about 4.30 in the morning for me right now. I like to wake up early. I don't necessarily like to wake up that early, but I did. So I figured, you know what, let me just get these knocked out. I'm going to do a couple videos this morning and get them into render. And that's something that I don't want to say I need to sort it out, but I've got, well, I'm thinking about doing a video where I talk about my, well, I talk about two things. And one is how uh, educational, I guess, it's been for me. That might be too strong a word, but no, that fits. What an education it's been for me, like how to make a YouTube video. And again, going back to my very first video that I ever made uh, seven months ago, eight months ago, and, and watching it now, it's not quite cringing. You know, I don't, I don't beat myself up. You can't know what you don't know. And when I made my first video, I didn't know how to make a video. I only knew what I had seen online and I could see what other people were doing. And it's like, okay, I, this is where I am. And, and this video that I'm watching, that's where I want to be. Right. So let's just do it. And I did. And then as soon as you do it, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. This needs to be fixed and this needs to be fixed. And, and you just start going online and checking out forums and you know, visiting different company websites and everything. And you just gradually like put all the pieces together like anything, like anything in life. You know, you just put the pieces together until you get the result that you want or until you get closer to the result that you want. Because I'm one of those people that I'll never really have the result that I want. It'll never be perfect. So that was what I did. That's what I've been doing. And it's it's weird for me to think back to you know, those first videos and all the, I guess, different steps that I've taken since then. Like, this needs to be different. I want this to be different all the way through till today. Moment. It's kind of hard to see my screen right now. There's a light on behind me in this hotel room and it's flickering. There we go. Uh, where are we going up here? Okay, under and then to the left, right? Could barely see that for some reason. So I have thought about making a video about and it's I'm not looking to like be definitive or anything like this is how you have to do it or this is how it's done but just more like this is what I've come up with you know this is like one way to do it so I've thought about uh, I've thought about doing that and also probably within that video would be I'd like to break down my rig and what I've ended up with as far as both technology and also the steps that I take. And when I think about it, it's it's weird that it, you know, it's just something that I do well every day now. 7 days a week I do this. Not all day, but I try to do a video every day. And you know, because I'm always setting up in hotel rooms, I, you know, you get good at something, you just kind of have a flow and it all just you know, you don't really need to think about it anymore. So I don't really think about setting up this rig with the two laptops and you know, one laptop is running Cakewalk and capturing audio and the other is, you know, we're gaming on that and that's capturing and I'm thinking of getting Elgato and just, you know, all these, all these things, you know, lay it all out. And then you take the pieces, I take the pieces, one audio file, one video file, I, I throw them together in editing, editing software. It's a tricky word to say sometimes. I throw them together in the editing software and I let them render. And because my utility laptop is not really, doesn't have a super strong graphics card in it, it can take for like an hour video and I go 1080, 1080p 60 FPS. For a one hour video, depending on how bright it is, like this video has a lot of black in the frame right now and so something like this will render faster because there's so much that's just black. And I feel like the efficiency of encoding now when you're rendering, that if a pixel is black, I, mm, 
and somebody who who's really up on the technology of encoding can probably explain this better than me but as far as i understand it if a pixel is black it's like the software says that it's black and then for the next frame instead of having to like write it again i guess it essentially can just say yeah it's still black if that makes sense i think it did it's it's quicker to render video that has a lot of a lot of black in it but for a video with a lot of light in it, uh, a lot of bright pixels or whatever, it might take literally like 10 or 12 hours to render the whole video. Because the first thing it's got to do, I feel like I'm giving away this whole video I was thinking of recording. I'm just going to describe it all now. Wow, I'm, I'm describing it in general terms, but then in the video I'll be more specific. But basically, because shadow play captures directly from the card it's a variable frame rate file when it's done and there's only a lot of editing programs can't work with variable frame rate video files it's got to be a fixed frame rate concentrating concentrating There we go. Right, turn signal off. Set the break, let's pick up our job. Now, it gave us the option of, it looked like doubles in the picture, but I think we'll have the option of, yeah, as long as the game doesn't crash, we'll have the option of singles or doubles. And I would rather take a single, a big single, confirm, Yes, I will. Take that job. Mortar to Redding, California. Beautiful. Break off. Here we go. So I do have an editing app that lets me work with a variable frame rate video file when it comes in. But then the first thing it has to do is convert it to a fixed rate file. And that the format that it makes it into is an MKV concentrating and those files tend to be like a uh, say a 45 minute video file out of shadow play will be I don't know 10 gig but then the MKV file that my editing software makes can be anywhere from, for that same file, could be anywhere from 60 to 120 gig. Makes a massive file. And then after it's done doing that, then it renders it into the final MP4. Like we've got our audio added and our title cards and everything. So that process of taking a 45 minute 10 gig video and rendering it into a six or eight gig video that's ready to be posted can take, like I said, anywhere from, I don't know, six hours to like literally 12 or 14 hours. Can we make it out of here? Oh, it's gonna be tight because this thing does not like to turn. And I don't wanna scrape. And I don't wanna hit that light pole. Oh, hmm. You know what? Let's be professional fake truckers. Let's be... Right? Because last video, I hit that post when we were leaving the that construction yard with our... What did we take? We took a crane through Yosemite. And before the video even started, leaving the yard, I hit that that post. How embarrassing. So let's do this the right way. So yeah, what I'm saying is that video 
rendering process is extremely uh, like CPU and GPU intensive and it takes literally all day. So my other laptop is down until that process is done because you can't do anything else with that machine while you're rendering video. And that's the box that I use to record audio on. So when I make a plan for the day, like if I'm gonna record a bunch of videos, I need to record them all at once. Is this Mobetta? Yeah, I think it is. I need to record them all at once and then render them all at once. Or not all at once, but like in a row. You know what I mean? Man, if I hit something after doing all that, oh, I think we got it. I think we got it. How far are we going? 192 miles. Wow, that's nothing. That's nothing. So it is a kind of a cool process. And it's weird to think, you know, back to when I was just recording off a headset mic in OBS and then posting the file with no editing, with no cards, with no music, no nothing. Just record it, throw it up there. And at the time, I thought, oh, you know, whatever. Part of me wanted to keep it simple and not, you know, clutter things up. I wanted it to be about the gaming rather than about things like, you know, title cards and music and everything. I thought that was, am I going to hit? Yeah, I'm going to hit. I thought that was uh, not cheating, but it was like, you know, like the video for what it is. I don't want to. I don't want you to watch the video because it's uh, flashy or don't hit a cop, don't hit a cop. Perfect. You know what I mean. I wanted to, I wanted to be legit, and it, I, I realized as time went on, I realized that it's not a question of you know not being legit, but it's there's just an expectation I think on YouTube. We all know. I think what what we expect now and even though those things like I know I've got a little title animation that I built and I know nobody really watches it and I think to some extent people don't even see it but at the same time you kind of expect it to be there you know like you do on any video and you don't really notice it but it's like you almost notice if it's not there if that makes sense so so yeah man just um, hey I don't know if he was going or not. So yeah, I think I may have had a point when I started talking about that, but then I completely forgot what it is or was. I do that. I do that. I tried to live stream yesterday and I thought I would I thought I had enough bandwidth to do it. I thought I had enough internet speed. It turns out I did not. But I definitely learned a lot. Like, I, I actually know what steps to take now to do it. And as soon as I have enough signal, I will. But at the moment, is he letting me out? Thanks, buddy. But at the moment, I'm not able to. Uh, and that was sort of a also a learning experience. And what was that? Oh, there was something about, something about live streaming that I was that was like oh man it could be because it's like early 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 morning I keep forgetting like what the hell I was talking about I wasn't really talking about anything ah I remember now I, I remember now so right now I'm sitting in a hotel room playing a video game talking to myself but I'm not talking to myself I'm talking to you which is I don't know it's like it's a thing I'm actually talking to you whoever you are Right, so that's cool. One, that's uh, maybe you'll get this, maybe you won't. I, I don't know. It's possible that I'm mental. Anything's possible. When I was recording or trying to not record, but when I was trying to do that live stream yesterday, like I had it set up so I was going like, we'll do it live. Like I was, I was live streaming, right? But then it was like the weirdest thing because. When, it, when I thought it was working, I thought I was talking to you. But then when I realized it wasn't working, it was like, oh no, I'm just talking to myself. Just sitting in a hotel room talking to myself. 
And it's weird because right now, technically, I'm sitting in a hotel room talking to myself, but I'm not. I'm talking to you because it is recording. Like, everything is recording right now, and we're all good. And when I thought I was live streaming, I thought I was talking to you, and it was all good. But, and then it was like, oh, no, it kept cutting out because the bandwidth wasn't good enough. And when, when you drop, when internet speed drops, YouTube cuts the video, cuts the live stream, and then it sends a signal to Shadowplay, which is what I was live streaming out of. It sends a signal to Shadowplay and shuts that off as well. So you get some little pop-ups and things that are like, you know, live stream has ended or whatever. So do we, we no, we're not going that way. I think we're going straight. I hope we're going straight because we're going straight. Oh dear. That was a little closer than I wanted. So basically what I'm saying is when I thought I was live streaming, I thought I was talking to you. And then when I realized the stream had cut out, it was like, oh no, you're just talking to yourself. And I got all embarrassed, even though it was literally exactly the same. Like not a single thing had changed except how I felt about it. But sometimes that's enough, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's there. I've said this before, there is a very fine line between making YouTube videos and just playing games and talking to yourself. Got to be careful. You don't want to cross that line. And apparently, whether or not you cross that line has to do with, like, how efficient your recording software is and whether or not it stays on. But either way. So that was kind of a... I, I don't know, man. I, I like to... Uh, I don't necessarily like people. I'm not a people person. But I like to... Uh, I like to kind of observe people and think about people. Not in a creepy stalker way. Like, I'm not observing people. I don't mean it like that. I just mean like our common humanity, you know, the things that we share as people and how all people all over the world are basically about the this, this same stuff. They just express it in different ways. But uh, things like that, uh, things like that always make me kind of uh, like, I think that's cool. You know, that's being able to kind of laugh about your, your, uh, not mistakes, but yeah, I guess that fits, but just being able to not take yourself too seriously, things like that always kind of, it always kind of makes me smile when I think about how we're all just sort of stumbling through life and we all, we're all kind of goofy, you know, but it's okay because we're all just headed to the same place, I guess. I told you it's early. It's early, yo. And I'm sure you've realized by now I'm kind of a, kind of a, uh oh, oh kind of a thinking cat, you know me. I like to think about things. Beautiful, we got the sun coming up, headed up into NorCal. Oh, look at you, parked back in the weeds. Oh, man, don't get me started on cops in America. I don't dislike cops, I don't hate cops, I don't have any like specific problem with cops or anything. At the same time, Law enforcement in the United States, man, there's a lot of money moving around in that business. There's a lot of money. So you, it's a, you gotta be careful of that moral hazard aspect in anything. Not just in law enforcement, but in anything. And what else? Ah. Uh... Uh, there was something else. I think I had one more thing. I can't remember what it is. You know, I've thought about writing this stuff down before I start. Like, these are all the things I want to mention during this episode. But I kind of... I wouldn't say I refuse to do that. But I refuse to do that. Because it's like, nah, I'm just... I just want to figure it out as it comes to me, you know? Like, not quite off the top of my head, but... I don't want to work from a script. I don't... I never want to be a performer. I just want to be a gamer, man. I just want to be a gamer. I think I already am. I think it's too late. I'll tell you something else that's really weird. I thought about this this morning as I was setting everything up. I thought how strange it is that these very immersive sims that we play that are sort of like worlds that we go into. Not, I'm not talking like, you know what I mean? like the people that get way 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 too involved in like MMORPG 
I don't mean it like that, but the Sims that we play moment try to do a little you know what I'm doing let's see if I can do this without wrecking us go out here and then go out here there we go full screen shoddy these sims that we play are they're pretty immersive worlds and they're getting more immersive and I think this whole world exists on my SSD drive and then I have a backup on a cloud drive but no matter where I go I fire this sim up and then I'm in this same virtual world and it travels with me it's really really strange and I think about like books back in the day like way back in the day like two and three hundred years ago the beginning of novels you know Cervantes and Herman Melville and, and the people that really kind of invented the modern novel 100 years ago 200 years ago 300 years ago and then paintings and then you know same thing that's been hundreds of years and then photography 150 years film has been a little over 100 years and how we've just found all these different ways to use our imaginations to create places that people can go to in a in a virtual way Right. And when I say virtual, I don't just mean electronic. I mean, when you read a book and imagine yourself in that place, you are virtually traveling to that place. Or when you look at a painting and you think about being there, you're virtually traveling to that place. And when I think about gaming, I think this is, to me, this is as creative and as artistic as a novel. You know, it's a, it's a place that you go in your imagination and it's real to you. It's like the Star Wars universe. You know, I grew up with that stuff. Been there since I was a kid. And you don't realize, I don't know how into Star Wars you are, but you don't realize how much that's always there. You know, it, it's it, like culturally, particularly in the United States, culturally, Star Wars is like, man, that's a thing. Like, it's just, it's like a real place. Obviously, it's not a real place. I know that. But it's like, it's almost a a true legend, a true story, if that makes sense. It's just always been there. It's always been a part of my life. And somebody just made that up. They just created that. And so when I think about gaming, I think these are places, imaginary places that people made up, but then we can go there. It's really, it's kind of heavy to think about. And I do, I do think of creating video games as an art form, you know, like any other, like, like writing, like painting, like filmmaking. And I know it's just going to get more and more, not even realistic, but like legit, you know, if you write a book today, if you write a novel, nobody's coming at you like, oh, books, that's never going to take off. Nobody's ever going to read books. You're just being silly. That's kid stuff. And, of course, that's not how people view literature now. Literature is like a legit thing, a really legit thing. And I feel like gaming is getting... It's not there yet. It won't be there for another, probably another generation or two. But I think gaming will get to a point where it is regarded as a legitimate art form in the same way that literature is and filmmaking is. And, um, you know, obviously painting is. I think it'll get there. And I think as it, as it goes through that process, I think you'll always have uh, the two components of it. One is how much the actual consumer of the art form likes it, which is going to be using film as an example. How many tickets did the movie get? Uh, did, did the movie sell? How many tickets did, did this movie generate how much money did it make how popular is it and then on the other side it's like how many awards did it win and those things have always been separate and they they're not always related you know one one does not always equal the other so i think in gaming you're going to have the same thing you may have a game that wins a ton of awards and people are like yeah it didn't really do it for me and then you've got another game that makes a ton of money sells a ton of tickets to use the example 
and critics are like, ah, you know, it's, it wasn't that great. It was popular, it just wasn't very good. So, anyway, it's, it's, uh, well, I think I've told you this before. When I was a kid, we had a big model train set in my basement. Like, big, ridiculous, like envy of the neighborhood sized. And you couldn't take it with you. It was massive. Uh, I mean, you couldn't even take it with you when you moved. We didn't move. We lived in the same house the whole time I was growing up. But you know what I mean. That shit ain't portable. That's going nowhere. And now, all these years later, moment, is it this one? It's this one. Is it? I think it's FedEx. I think it is. I think, oh, yeah, and you know what? I think, feel like we've been here before and we had crashes. Did we? Hmm. So, yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is it's crazy for me to think that there is a, a virtual world that is also completely portable and you can take with you anywhere. Multiple virtual worlds. Take a look at the lay of the land here. Um, you just want to do this. Uh, I got to do it third person. You know I feel bad about that. I actually do because early days I was I was working from in cab, but it, it's just not something I'm as good at as I used to be. It's kind of a downer. I don't know where I lost my mojo, but I did. I did. Uh, is this even enough? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Might take us two swings. Okay, here comes the beeper. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to go to a repair shop, take the flags and the oversized load sign off the front. I realized I didn't do that before we left Oakland, but there was no way to do both. We couldn't get to a garage and still get to get to Stockton to pick this load up. So off camera I will go to a garage straighter out. I'll go to a garage, I'll take this stuff off the front of the truck and then when we come in next episode we will be heading from Redding up into Oregon Oregon will be downloaded and installed, and we will be good to go. This is not, this is, this is no gimme yet. I mean, this is going to be a little tricky to get this thing. Get it over and get it straightened out in the amount of space that we have. Yep. Oh, uh, didn't make it. I don't want to do three swings. Yep. Oh, I do apologize. Oh, and I still might miss it. Oh, that would suck. Nope, I think I can just cut it. Oh, that is so ugly. You know what? Three swings is all it gets. We got work to do. Right. Okay. And we are, yeah, we're already like, yeah, we're level 30. So it's going to take us quite a while to get up to 31. Beautiful folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of American Truck Simulator. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you in Oregon next time. Take care now.